And we are back with breaking news from Capitol Hill. House Republicans have just unveiled two articles of impeachment they're bringing against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. The first is focused on what they call a willful and systemic refusal to comply with the law. The second is focused on what they're alleging is a breach of public trust. The reason? Republicans disagree with how the secretary is handling the humanitarian crisis at the southern border. In response, the Department of Homeland Security released this statement. Quote, this farce of an impeachment is a distraction from other their vital national security priorities and the work Congress should be doing to actually fix our broken immigration laws. Republicans don't want to fix the problem. They want to campaign on it. Congresswoman Nanette Barragan is back with us. That last point gets exactly at it. This for them is they believe it is a political winner. Absolutely. And this is just a political stunt. Uh, we know that uh, they're going after the secretary because they don't agree on policy. That has never been a reason to impeach a cabinet secretary. And it hasn't been done, I believe, since the Civil War. As somebody who served on the Homeland Security Committee and used to chair uh, the border the border sub, uh, we never went after Nielsen and tried to impeach her when she was separating children and families, right? It was a policy disagreement, uh, and that is what we're seeing happening here. Republicans can't govern. Uh, we know that they this is a do-nothing Congress. They have not been able to govern, uh, so they're trying to add more on the border to campaign on, and that's what this is, a political stunt. I, I, can I just emphasize that point, because I think it's important for folks to really understand out there, as this news is breaking right now, and folks are digesting this, understand fundamentally this is a stunt. This is not about anything that Mayorkas, the secretary, has done that violates his constitutional oath of office that that falls into the high crimes or misdemeanor category that is required by the Constitution. Um, this is purely a policy disagreement. And, you know, it ain't really that because Republicans haven't put up a policy that they could counter what Mayorkas has done and what the administration has done. So I think it's important for us to really contextualize this moment because, yet again, impeachment is being thrown around and used as a political cudgel against the opponents uh, of the Republicans um, that they disagree with on policy. I just want to put that on the table That's because it's important. I think it's an important aspect for people to understand. So don't all get all excited and hyped up about this. Oh, my God, what did the secretary do? He ain't do nothing well, except do what secretaries do, and that's enforce the policy of the administration that Republicans happen to disagree with. To that point, Betty Thompson, ranking member on the committee, sort of preempted this, right? They knew earlier this week this was coming. I want you to read part of his letter to you. Your ill-advised decision to rush to a markup of an impeachment resolution of Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas without any form of due process or Democrats' properly requested minority day hearing is disappointing yet expected. Nothing about this sham impeachment has abided by House precedent, but all of it has been done to reach the predetermined outcome you promised your donors last year. Yeah, and we've seen this has been a major talking point of Marjorie Taylor Greene, and what she's been wanting to do is, is impeach Mayorkas. Um, but there's nothing here, and Mayorkas is in the room right now uh, talking with Republicans on what to do about the border. He's been readily accessible. Uh, you're talking about somebody who's been more accessible uh, than most and willing to work across the aisle to address the southern border, but that is, again, not what Republicans want. Um, I think it's a dangerous precedent, uh, and I think that's something we got to continue <laughs> to talk about mm -hmm. because... We're going to go down this road of we're going to just start impeaching cabinet secretaries that we have a policy disagreement with. That is, that's only going to further polarize this country and be very dangerous. The last time um, impeachment proceedings were initiated against a member of the president's cabinet was 1876, when impeachment charges were filed against um, the secretary of war. Uh, this was a predetermined impeachment. The chairman of the committee, Mark Green, he was actually caught on tape fundraising off of plans to impeach the secretary last spring. Um, I, I'm, I'm struggling to find in this packet a high crime crime, misdemeanor, bribery, <laughs> or treason. Well, and that's I, because there isn't any. And if you take a look, I'm sorry, to, at some own Republicans, uh, Representative McClintock, who, who I don't agree yeah. with on anything, has effectively said, there's nothing here. Ken Buck has said, Ken there Buck is, is nothing here. Republicans themselves know there's nothing here, and they have said it. Again, we're going right back to it's election season, um, and this is part of the political messaging to divide this country on immigration and go after uh, the secretary who's 
in charge of the border. And part of the argument they're trying to make is about obstruction. They're trying to say that somehow yeah. Mayorkas has not been sufficiently compliant. I want to remind folks he has testified before Congress 27 times in 35 months. DHS has produced 20,000 pages of documents to Congress. DHS has provided 75 witnesses in more than 50 hearings, and they've responded to 1,400 congressional letters since January 20th, 2021. Also, just like not a great use of government resources to have DHS, which you should theoretically want folks Focused on the border instead becoming pen pals with the U.S. Congress. But even if he wasn't compliant, would it be an impeachable offense? This is policy. And again, let's remember, Republicans have said no to what? Thousands of Border Patrol agents, money at the southern border. My orcus is asking for this money along with the president, and Republicans have said no. How do you impeach a cabinet secretary who's asking you for resources to address the southern border, and you're saying no because you want a political campaign issue? What is, do, you, do you think this goes next? What, what's the play on, on um, after we get through the news cycle of, of the breaking impeachment mm -hmm. uh, decision? What's the play? What happens in the House? Uh, what, what, what do you think the movements inside um, the Congress are going to be? Are you, will you find Republicans quietly coming up to you going, don't worry about it. We, this is not Which is what happened the last right. time. The last or time they were like, please stop doing be, this. Yeah, exactly. Or is this going to be a forward effort because, you know, the whole Biden thing has collapsed on its ear. What do you think happens next? Well, you know, there are conversations happening behind the scenes on a bipartisan basis um, on immigration issues and border issues. You just don't see and read about those. Um, but I can tell you, as the chair of the CHC, I've had people approach me, Republicans approach me, and saying, hey, let's work on something together. So I think there are still some reasonable Republicans uh, that we can go to and we can talk to and we can work with. Some who will tell you behind the scenes, uh, this is not the right path, that they need to do something for the American people, whether it's lowering prescription drug prices mm -hmm. or helping economic issues. Uh, there are so many that the American people want us to do, but because they can't govern, it's just been about, well, let's see where we can unify us. And that has generally been against the border. But we need to continue to work and do the hard work of coming up with something that will be palatable uh, for both sides and for um, for us to address the southern border. There is no disagreement that something has to be done and, and action has to be done. The disagreement is, can we have a real conversation that really is a negotiation back and forth and a compromising? And that's where we need to get to. Chair of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, Congresswoman Annette Barragan, thank you so much for waking up early, being with us. Thank you.